Sunday when God meant today is the second Sunday of the blessed month of Aviv. And last month we were focusing heavily on the Sunday Gospels, a theme around the Holy Spirit, rightfully so, surrounding the, the Pentecost, the Feast of Pentecost. This month, the month of Aviv, is about the apostles and the work of the church. And our Lord, we see how our Lord supports his apostles and he gives them authority and commissions them to serve the world. And the gospel that we just read from in the gospel of Matthew chapter 18 is very rich. And there's a wide variety of topics. We see the generosity of God's forgiveness. We see the love of God that he has for his little ones. We see a serious consequence of what happens when we lead his little ones astray. And all these topics, the one topic that seems to underlie most of the Lord's teachings in Matthew chapter 18 is the topic of Christ's little ones, and, and, and above that, humility. And so I'm going to be a little bit um, challenging today. I'm going to prove a point. I'm gonna, uh, my, my, my talk is going to be more about being a little bit extreme to make the point, but I'm trying not to discount other things as well. And I'll, and I'll, I'll kind of allude to that as we go along. Our Lord said today, without this thing, you can't be saved. It's a bold statement that he said, and I'm going to repeat it for you. Without this thing, you cannot go to heaven. Without this, all of your virtues become a source of sin, and all of your good works turn into dust. The one thing that is absolutely necessary for your salvation is humility. Our Lord said in the gospel today, in verse 2, our Lord called a little child to him and set him in the midst of them. And he said, assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as, as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. You will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. You will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven without this virtue. So today we're not talking about the sacraments. Again, I'm being extreme. Although the sacraments are life-giving, they are, they are the pillar of the church, right? We can't discount them completely. We're not talking about the sacraments today. It is something that God requires of you. It's It's... It's as important as baptism and confession and chrismation and even the Eucharist itself. If you don't have this, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. It's a thing called humility. And if you don't have a heart that is humbled, I don't care if you are, if you've been going to the Orthodox Church for 70 years, I don't care if you have memorized all of the details of the councils and all the canons, and all the scripture of the Old and New Testament. I don't care if we make a pilgrimage to every single holy site in the world, and we go to every monastery in every convent. If you puff up your chest with pride, and you pat yourself on the back because of it, and you feel that you've done God a favor by entering into his kingdom, then you have not entered his kingdom. This is pride. This is death. You can faithfully walk with God for 70 years. You can be in church every single time the doors open. You can partake of all the sacraments. You can study the Bible every single day and every single night. You can pray seven times a day, as our church canon is. You can, but it only takes... This one sin called pride. You can puff up your chest a little bit and pat yourself on the back for being so faithful. I'm so good. I've been so good to God. For being so much more righteous than everybody else. For being so much smarter, so much more studied, so much more generous. We compare ourselves. And the same sin that was able to turn the angels into demons and the archangels to the devil himself, 
the same sin will prevent you from entering into the kingdom. You can spend, in the same breath, you can spend 70 years of your life in, in sin and in struggle and challenging temptations. And you never set foot in the church. You didn't take any sacraments. You've had your, your back turned to Christ your whole life. But while there's still that window of time of repentance, that window of hope, the Holy Spirit stirs in your heart. And even in those last moments of your life, and you respond and you begin to repent and you weep over your sins and you fall down on your knees and you fall down on your face in front of God and you realize that you've become absolutely empty, empty handed, not boasting of a single book that you've read or a single church service that you've attended or a single penny that you've given to the church, but you come empty handed begging for God's mercy because you know that you're a sinner and you could have spent your life in wickedness. You could become like the thief on the cross, hanging there, knowing that you hang there because you deserve it. Because you're a thief. I'm speaking to myself, obviously. And you, and you turn to Christ and you say, please remember me in your kingdom. And in that emptiness, in that brokenness, in that humility in front of God, our Lord will turn to you and say, I tell you this day, you will be with me in paradise. For thousands of years, the church has prayed, Kyrie Eleison, Lord have mercy. We pray, O oh, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. O oh, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. O oh, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. What is mercy? Mercy is only for those who don't deserve it. Mercy is only for the undeserving. Mercy can only, by definition, be given to those who are undeserving. If you deserve it, then it's not mercy. So many of our prayers are filled with requests for favors. And when our prayers should be filled with requests for mercy... I've sinned. I've sinned against God. I've sinned against the creator of the universe. I can't say I don't deserve the consequences of my sin. I chose that sin. Sometimes we, we do compare ourselves with Christ and we, we realize that we fall short. And sometimes we're humble enough to ask God for things. And yet we stop short of asking for mercy because we, in the back of our minds we still think, I'm not that bad. I know I'm not Christ, but like, I'm not that bad. I mean, you don't have to be perfect to get to heaven, right? I'm way better than all those who are outside the church, so we say. I know more about orthodoxy than most people, even in the church. I show up at church more often than the people do at church. So I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good for the most part. And so then we ask, Lord, please grant me salvation and grant me the entrance into the kingdom. And it's good that we ask for that, but we don't quite think of it as mercy because in the back of our minds we think, I'm good enough. I'm good enough. I'm decent enough. I'm loving enough. I'm loving enough to my family. I'm loving enough to my kids. I do enough stuff, good stuff for them that God should, should let me into the heavens. He really should because I'm not that bad. And as long as you're thinking like that, you're failing to ask for mercy. You may be asking for payment for good work. You may be asking for a favor, but you're not asking for mercy. When we say, Kiri Laison. Mercy is only given to the undeserving. And the only way that God is going to give you heaven is if you recognize in your gut that we don't deserve to go there. I know I don't. It's not just, Lord, do me a favor and let me get to heaven. 
It's not just, Lord, let me into heaven because that's really what I deserve. No, it's, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Are we willing to call ourselves a sinner? It takes humility to do that. And without humility, you will not see the mercy of God. We have to humble ourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. We're told in Scripture, everyone who exalts himself will be put down, and everyone who humbles himself will be exalted. Do you want to be exalted? Do you want to be justified and saved? Do we want to enter the kingdom of heaven? The only way up is down. The only way to ascend to the heavens is by getting on your knees in humility. And I would simply remind all of us that everything the church does from birth to death is calculated on your path to humility. Everything, everything the church does. The church knows how critical it is to have humility and how necessary it is to have humility. Everything the church does is calculated for this, for the sake of humility. Think of baptism. Think of infant baptism. One aspect of it is that when you baptize that child, when you baptize that child in water in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and that child grows up in the midst of the church, we want to save that individual from saying that temptation to say, well, I'm orthodox because I'm smart enough or I'm holy enough to become orthodox. Everybody else is missing out. Everybody else is doing their own thing. But me, I chose orthodoxy. Now I was baptized by my own choice. It can lead to pride. No, it's a great gift that we give to all of our members in the church that we remember that this was a gift given to me at birth. Before I was even old enough to appreciate what was going on. This is humility. This is something the church, this is one of the mechanisms of the church. Think of communion. All of us, from the three-year-old, right, to the 73-year-old, right? Who comes every week to the table. And we don't just, like, with our own power come and take the chalice and drink from the chalice, and I take the body and I feed myself. No. What do we do? We come forward. We kneel sometimes. We open our mouths and then wait for someone to feed you. Is there any humility in that? It doesn't matter if you're the CEO of a company, a renowned doctor, anything. You come. You don't presume, presume to touch the Eucharist yourself. You don't shovel it, shovel it down your own mouth. You wait to be fed by someone. Is there any humility in that? Think of how we interpret the Bible. If your answer is, I got the right answer because I said it enough, I'm smart enough, I've got this all figured out, and the Holy Spirit was stirring within me, then I think we still have work to do. But you say, instead, this is what the church has taught for thousands of years. This is part of the deposit of faith handed down by Christ to his apostles and then to us. I'm not trusting in my own thoughts. I'm not trusting in my own studies, but I humble myself on my knees before the teachings of the Holy, of the Holy Church, and that's why I believe what is true. Not because I'm convinced, but ultimately I submit myself to the teachings of the Church. I can go on. We can talk about obedience. We can talk about obedience to your father confession. We could talk obedience in the service. Everything the church does is calculated to enhance humility in our lives. Because humility is necessary for salvation. Our Lord is very clear today in the gospel. You cannot enter the kingdom of heaven without it. So the next time we run into an aspect of the church that makes you feel humbled, one more thing about orthodoxy is that it makes you feel like you're taking orders and giving them. It's a beautiful thing. That's because the church knows that without humi humility, none of us will make it to heaven. None of us. 
It's not just about answering the right questions on a theological exam. It is about having your heart humbled before God and humbled before your brothers and sisters. And if you can't look in the mirror and see a sinner, see someone who is undeserving, if you can't think for a second about actually humbling yourself before the teaching of the church and doing what the church commands and being obedient and letting the church interpret the scripture for you instead of just trusting on your own ways and your own sources, sources outside of the church, if you can't imagine doing any of this for a second, then pride might be a problem. It might be. And just a reminder that pride is the only sin that it took to convert the angels into demons. St. Augustine says, though, through humility, he tells us that even lonely men can become like angels. So we have to ask ourselves today, do we really want salvation? Do we want forgiveness? And do we want joy? Do we actually want to go to the kingdom? Then in our minds and in our hearts, and even with your knees, humble yourself. And it's only through humility that we see the face of God. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Blessed.